actually pretty big. So looking at it originally, I was like, <gasps> Lion, good job. Yes, rock. <laughs> Good morning. Sorry it has been so long since I've uploaded a video. There's just been a lot of stuff going on just in life in general. There's been a lot of stuff but then there's been nothing. Today I am working from home today and I wanted to kind of just do like an update video on the job lost job search process where I'm at now um, trying a new recipe today and just kind of talking a little bit about my thoughts in general just in life yeah I want to just quickly show you what I got from the grocery store because I like sharing things that I get from the grocery store um, okay so the recipe that I'm trying today is like a chicken tortilla soup recipe I think I have been binge watching Brianna, I think it's Brianna Taylor, Brianna Tainer lately. Mm, love her videos so much. They're so inspiring. And she did a recipe using these things. So I'm gonna try this. Is he not the cutest thing ever? Daycare sent that to us like last week. And it's just so cute. Okay, so crock pot fiesta chicken. We don't actually own a crock pot anymore. I got rid of ours and we now have an Instapot. And I'm pretty sure there's a slow cook method on the Instapot that I'm gonna try. And I was reading that it takes even longer, so we're just gonna do that. This is everything for our recipe. It calls for the tomatoes and the black beans and the corn. I'm like 99% positive we already have black beans in the cabinet because I consistently keep these around, but yeah. We also probably have chicken in the freezer, but this is already thawed and I don't have to quick thaw it. It called for two limes, so there's two limes here. It also called for cream cheese. I'm pretty sure we also have cream cheese in the fridge. I just don't know how long it's been in there. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do the tacos to put the, it on top of. And then we got some more rice because rice is like a easy thing that you can use with a lot of stuff. And then this was also at Safeway. And y'all know what time it is. I also like really missed making videos and editing. I've recorded a lot of videos here and there about various different things. I have a video still to finish editing about layoff tips that at some point I'll finish. I just put a lot of work into editing that. And then I filmed an update video about like layoff tips after I found my new job and then I just, yeah. But I wanna get back into doing more vlogs and more aesthetic videos. So here we are. We also have a lot of house updates, which are really exciting. Um, but also like really scary and kind of going into one of the topics I want to talk about just about like how I'm feeling about life in general. I'm going to quit rambling, put the food away, start some breakfast and get dressed for work and then start my day and I will get into the real bits of this video.
microphone died, so probably gonna hear an echo right now. You'll be fine. What's going on? A lot of things are going on. So um, I think in my last video I did, which was oh, back in like June, I mentioned how I was laid off. So I was laid off from a fintech startup. Um, update from that, I no longer am unemployed. I was looking for a job for a little over two months and the company that I'm working for is a really great family run company. It is here local in Portland. It is hybrid. I go in two days a week. Um, the people I work with are really great and they are very open to the fact that I have a child and they're very like family oriented. So um, it really just jives very well with my current lifestyle, which is I have a child and sometimes things come up, so it's not really a problem for them. With that job search process though, I made a whole video about tips about dealing with the layoff process that I'm still in the process of editing. I filmed it in like July, still not done yet. I'm working on it guys, I promise I'm working on it. I had to figure out what my non-negotiables were as far as the type of company and position that I would be joining. And for me at that point, like I really prioritized companies that valued family and who weren't gonna work me to the bone. I didn't care about like IPOing and stocks and shares. I didn't care about innovating like that. I just wanted a good company that I could be at for a while and grow with and help grow and grow other people that also was going to align with my personal life and, you know, wasn't gonna require a lot of hustle or like grit and all the other stuff. In tech specifically, once you get to a certain point in your career, I feel like at about mm, 10 years, you're kind of just like, I just want chill. And I don't mean chill like be lazy. I just mean chill like you're not trying to save the world. I leave all that to the younger people who don't have families, but I feel like once you have a family, that becomes your priority and your career comes second and you're no longer interested in working jobs that are just really gonna be very volatile. And that's just, um, what I prioritize over everything else, I prioritize it over money, I prioritize it over being remote, I prioritize it over like crazy benefits or like company offsites in Sweden and things like that. Like that was just the most important thing to me and I really think that was a great decision. Um, do stay tuned for my layoff tips video. I am working on editing it. I hope I have it ready in the next month or so um, where I go over all kinds of things that really helped me with my layoff process and staying motivated and things that helped me land my job. Being laid off just really highlighted how much money we spend on stuff that doesn't matter and how much money you could save by not spending money on stuff that doesn't matter. Um, when you don't have income coming in, you're either relying on your savings or you're relying on your credit cards, um, or you're relying on unemployment. Um, and during that time, I really dialed back the budget, right? I wasn't spending money on stuff. I wasn't, um, trying to shop a ton minus the Lily Pulitzer sunshine sale, which I had already planned on spending before I got laid off. Um, and just like... The past few months, I've kind of sat and looked at social media and realized that we're, we've always been in a consumerist society and we're always like targeted to buy things and spend money on things. But once I really had to cut back the spending, I started paying more attention to the fact that like everyone's trying to sell you something. Everyone wants you to shop their outfit on Like to Know It. Everyone wants you to shop their Amazon storefront. Everyone wants you to buy this new thing so they can get a commission off of your sales. I'm guilty of it. Um, on some of my previous videos of, of giving links and being like, check this thing out. And like, it is so unnecessary. Doesn't add any value to your life, really, if you're being totally honest. Can potentially put you in more debt, can prevent you from taking a crazy vacation, can prevent you from having a rainy day fun. Like all of these things, and it just, it fills up your closet and you look at clothes you don't wear, you look at stuff in your house, you look at all these extra things that like really don't matter. And I really am trying to be more conscious about the things that I am buying and not spending my money so frivolously on things. I love looking at my closet and seeing all of the colorful Lily Pulitzer, but I'll be honest, I've got a good 20 pieces in my closet I haven't even worn yet. I still have tags on some of those items in my closet. <laughs> I won't wear them until maybe next summer, but probably not. So like, I'm really just trying to just be more mindful of not spending money on stuff that doesn't matter. I don't need to reorganize my kitchen with this crazy fridge organizers. I don't need to buy these crazy love every toys for my son because he just loves a plain old 
bucket and random things out of the drawer. So not having money coming in and looking at cutting back expenses has been a priority for me. Um, in addition, the cost of things have gone up so much. I don't know how people who don't make a good living can survive if I'm being totally honest. The cost of groceries is so expensive now. The cost of gas is expensive. We have um, an SUV that costs a good 70, $80 to fill up. My husband's truck is like double that. Um, the cost of subscription services has gone up. Delivery services like Grubhub has gone up. Restaurants have gone up. Like I just, I read that Costco's raising their membership, although I feel like that is one membership that's worth the cost. Everything is just so much more expensive and I'm really trying to be more mindful of the money that we're spending. Um, my husband and I both, especially since we have a home edition. Um, and so I encourage you to like not feel a, like to not give in to all of this consumerism, um, all of the ads that are targeted to us, all of the things that influences influencers are targeting us to buy because it just contributes to waste. It just contributes to the amount of stuff in your house and it just contributes to you not being financially free. A lot of the things that I do have that I don't need anymore, I'm giving away. So I give a lot of stuff away on local buy nothing groups. A lot of my clothes, like even really nice clothes I give away, baby clothes, baby toys, all that kind of stuff. It just feels good to give it away to someone in need versus um, trying to sell it or giving it to Goodwill. I had a death in the family recently. Um, my aunt who was someone who helped and she helped me with so many things while I was in college and she recently passed away. Um, it was unexpected. She had been sick off and on for a while, for many, many years. I just didn't realize how sick she was currently. Um, her death just really highlighted to me how important it is to keep in touch with family and friends that you don't talk to very often, whether it's call once a week and do a video call or an audio call and like see how each other are doing um, and just keep in touch. It also really highlighted how much I need to go visit my family more. I'm trying to be more conscious about maintaining relationships with friends and family. Um, it's hard when our lives are so busy, but I think it's really important to maintain that. Um, and they can always be fixed. I think if they are a little fractured or a little strained, um, it just might take time, um, might take some therapy, uh, but maintaining those relationships has really been something um, I'm trying to do better at, as well as creating memories um, with my family, my little family, my husband and my son. And, um, just trying to be more present with my family and my friends um, because life is so short, so very short. And I'd rather have a memory bank full of wonderful memories when um, those people are no longer in my life versus regrets about wishing I would have done things because I definitely have regrets when it comes to my aunt about just not calling more, not visiting, not, not doing a lot of things that I should have done and, and I wish I would have done. Um, so yeah. For Halloween coming up next week, I have a costume for Enzo. We're gonna do trunk or treat. The church up the street does trunk or treat where people park their cars and the kids can go around to different trunks. It's during the day, so it's not scary at night or anything like that. Enzo's too young to go trick or treating. He doesn't stay up that late. Um, he's usually in bed by like seven, 7.15. But trunk or treat starts at five, so we can do that. Um, his costume, um, since he was a little baby, like chunky baby, like four months, everyone kept saying he looks like The Rock. So he's gonna be Maui. So uh, I think it'll be really cute. So hopefully he likes it just as much as we do and we get to have a little bit of time at Trunk or Treat. Um, I'm trying to read. I don't read at all. I really don't. My friends have tried to get me to read. I just, I just don't have the attention span. But I want to stop watching and so much TV and being on my phone so much and I want to spend like 30 minutes at night before bed reading to kind of just like wind down. So if you have any books, um, I don't discriminate against books. Personally, my favorite kind of books are like period pieces and like anything having to do with like treachery or deception or swindling or just 
deceit. Just people doing messed up stuff are my jam. So if you have any books along those lines, whether fiction or nonfiction, send them my way, especially if they're easier reads and not super complicated storylines. I can't do a ton of complication. I, I will lose interest. Um, if it helps, my favorite podcast ever in the world is Swindled. So anything along that line, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, I'm all about. Okay, I'm actually gonna go check um, my load of laundry that I started and I'm gonna go eat my lunch. I ordered a market salad from Chick-fil-A. I love Chick-fil-A salad, they're really good. I just really want like a bunch of vegetables right now. And I'm gonna check on my soup. Hey, I am back. It is now 3.54 um, and I've just been working off and on. Um, I had my lunch, I started some laundry, washed some things for Enzo um, and also washed some of um, stuff in the bathroom. Did I mention I did some more work? I did some more work, obviously, because I'm working from home today and I'm taking a quick break. I'm gonna go pick up Enzo in probably like 20 minutes. Um, but I wanted to show you his Halloween outfit. Um, it's screen printed, so it's like kind of janky, but you kind of get it. Um, I was a little worried about the waist, but it's actually like pretty stretchy. So he should be able to fit this just fine. And then this is the top. Um, and this is the top of it so it goes like this with the pants it will be really cute um i'll definitely you know slick back his hair um and he'll look like maui actually we haven't seen moana i've seen them, some of the videos on like youtube and, like the music and i'm aware of the characters but we haven't seen moana so um but hopefully we'll get a chance to watch it before halloween 47 degrees outside. That is cold. Okay, so this is the status of our addition. Um, they ripped off all the siding of the house. This was so loud the other day when they were doing this. Monday was so loud, but they ripped off all of the siding. That light's probably gonna go. That's our dryer vent over there. Um, this is crawl space down here. It's definitely got water in it, which is unfortunate, but that's what happens with the rain. It's actually pretty big. So looking at it originally, I was like, this doesn't look that big, but now that I see it, this is gonna be pretty big. We're back home. Well, I'm we. I'm back home. I put on this nice comfy sweater when I went outside and look who we got. Someone, someone. Dinner is almost ready. I have to take his food out. I have to shred the chicken, um, put it back in. And then I gotta let his food cool down for a bit. So I'm sure it's gonna be really hot, which is probably gonna take like 10 minutes. And then make one of these little tacos. What are you doing? Stop it. No, I need these. I need these. Why do your hands smell? Yeah, baby hands. Look at his cute little onesie. It's his mama's boy. It's it's too cute. Say hi, dude. Say hi. Yep, yeah, that's Enzo. Yeah, you see hi, Enzo. Hi, Enzo. Yeah. He's 15 months. He's a lot of fun, like a lot of personality, really giggly, really silly, really goofy. He's got a lot of teeth coming in right now. He's had like five teeth coming in for the past like two weeks, two or three weeks. Um, so I think he's been a little cranky from that. I need these. I need them. He's also like learned tantrums. So he'll throw himself on the floor and make a lot of fuss if he doesn't get what he wants. So we're doing a lot of, a lot of bigger, bigger kid things right now. Big toddler things. A lot. <laughs> There we go. Anyway, we're probably gonna do a little bit of screen time. We don't 
typically do too much. Like if I do any at all, it's like 10, 15 minutes a day of like Miss Rachel or Jojo and Grand Grand or like Baby Einstein he's really been doing lately. I like um, all those shows because they're very slow. I really like Baby Einstein because it's old school, like from what, early 2000s? So it's like puppets and like just videos of animals. So very low stimulation. Yeah, and I just do that to give myself some time because lately he's been really extra clingy um, and he's been wanting a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention, which is totally understandable, but if I'm trying to make him dinner, I can't give that to him. So yeah, so we might do that. We might not, we'll see how he does with just his toys and no screen, but we might have to bust out like some Miss Rachel for 10 minutes while I get his food ready. Yeah, you're close to the cat, huh? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Um, it's really more soupy than I would like it to be, but it tastes really good. It's just super soupy. So, um, what are you doing? Enzo has been taking headers off the couch and he thinks it's funny. Luckily, I put all kinds of stuff down there, but it's kind of scary. But I know this is, is what they do. Shoot. I think he likes it, y'all. Now to sign for more, so I gotta get that going. How do you say more? Good job, darling. This recipe is actually pretty good. If you have an Instapot and you do a slow cooker or like crock pot recipe, um, I did normal and I added an hour. Um, and I use the thin chicken. I think if I would use thicker chicken, I'd be more worried, but the thin chicken just, I didn't even need to shred it. It was, it just fell apart, so. Good job, yes, roar! Yeah, roar, lion, that's right. <laughs> 